cover a few tidbits here while we're here in Cabo, watching the uh, fishing pelican fly by. Um, so it's uh, a little bit before 10 this morning and just took a walk from about a mile away, the white resort back there is where we're staying. So my legs are pretty warm and I'm going to stretch here just in a little bit. Um, and um, there's a few issues that are really beneficial to what's going on this morning. Number one, I'm outside in the sun. I took a walk outside. Oxytocin levels should be higher. Cortisol levels should come down. Number two, I'm in the fasted state, which I typically would always be at 10 in the morning. I usually don't eat until 10. Probably run a little bit later uh, today again, but I pre-prep breakfast this morning, so hopefully it won't be 11. Um, try to only eat about 10 hours a day. I usually start at 10 a.m. We try to finish at 8. I think last night, Suzanne and I had a glass of wine at about 9 o'clock, so uh, eating a little later will be good. One of the things that the fasting state benefits, and we're going to cover this in great detail when I go into insulin sensitivity and hyperinsulinemia and talk about how that impacts fat and fat loss. But one of the things that fasting does is it lowers insulin levels. It's one of your key mechanisms for reducing insulin resistance, which once we get into that, you will see it is probably the single greatest driver of chronic disease. And it thwarts what most people come to me for in health and wellness management, which is weight loss. Everybody's trying to improve their body composition. Usually that means losing fat and probably to a lesser extent putting on muscle. Um, the second thing that I'm going to do right now, I walked, I did some exercise in the fasted state. Uh, so my body, of course, there's probably not much sugar in my bloodstream right now. So my body actually to walk here was probably forced to pull energy from my fat cells to provide that. Now, getting ready to use a different source of energy in my muscles, stored glycogen. I'm going to do some sprints. I'm going to do a couple of sprints. I'll actually do probably six. I'm going to imitate a scientific study that I have told you guys about before if you ever follow my uh, wellness patients um, posts on Facebook. This study was a study that looked at an important metric of health, which is peak exercise tolerance. We measure it in Cynogenics by VO2 max, volume of oxygen consumed per kilogram of body weight per minute. We know from looking at scientific evidence that Mortality is tightly linked to peak exercise tolerance. The fitter you are, the less likely you are to die. It's a better predictor of how long you're going to live even than your age. And one of the ways to train to increase peak exercise tolerance is high intensity training. Or what I'm going to demonstrate here is a variation of that sprint interval training. This study that I'm talking about demonstrated in, in some non-exercisers, they measured VO2 max. And then they had them do a six week regimen of basically what I'm gonna do today. They had them do six 10 second sprints. Now wide open sprints, you gotta be warm, you gotta be stretched. And they had them do those with a minute of rest in between. Six, that's one minute of exercise. Day, three days a week, and in six weeks, these people increased their VO2 max by on average 15%. So this is a very efficient way to increase your peak exercise tolerance and lower your mortality. What else will you do? Well, because sprinting is probably reminiscent of the fight or flight mechanism, it causes the release of two important hormones, epinephrine and norepinephrine. Adrenaline and noradrenaline in layperson's terms. And so your body thinks it's in, you know, emergency mode. And those two hormones result in enzymes being released that break down fat. And again, I think we all are focused on trying to want to lose some fat. So another benefit to what I'm doing right now, I'm doing it in the fasted state. Now, I'm on a beach. Those of you that 
know I consider myself old at 57. I know that my connective tissue and my joints are not what they were when they were 18. The 18 year old will go out to the local track and run 440s and or the 100 yard dash. But that's hard on the joints, ligaments. Um, I ran, when I was in Cordova, I got stuck doing my sprints on flat, hard ground, and I literally gave myself a left lumbar radiculopathy that lasted months. And doing this now, the beach is soft, I think it's okay, you won't harm yourself. Um, it's very low impact. The other way to avoid high impact is to use a hill and sprint up the hill. So anyways, without further ado, I'll show you a couple sprint intervals with a minute of rest. The, uh, the goal, uh, 10 seconds, hopefully I'll make it longer than 10 seconds. I'm just going to go to point of failure where the legs feel like they're going to lock up. The way I talk about sprint interval training is pretend like a bear's chasing you and stop when you let it eat you. If you do that, you will accomplish some major metabolic benefit. All right, loving you from Cabo. Okay, so I did a little bit of a variation because I went about 150 yards. So I'm sure that I ran longer than 10 seconds because I'm not that fast. So my rest time to walk back the 100 yards where I started from was a minute and a half. It brings another of mine, another way to skin the cat, which is you can go to point of failure, meaning instead of running 10 second sprint, sprint until your legs lock up like mine did right there, and then fully recover for a few minutes Do another one and another one and i think four of those will probably accomplish about the same as the uh sprint interval training 10 second six wheel i got a scientific uh, article to support that as well Whew. i'm gonna do a couple more but you don't need to watch me since i'm doing an intermediate version and yesterday was leg day and I did these yesterday morning and generally I don't advocate doing high intensity sprint training every day, especially early on. It can uh, uh, cause too much stress, increase cortisol levels, but uh, I'm pretty habituated. And this is my uh, week before labs. So I'm trying to optimize. So I'm gonna take my chances and do a few extras. Hey, don't forget, high intensity training raises HDL cholesterol, which is your protective cholesterol. Um, it uh, improves growth hormone levels. It's good for you. Just remember, health isn't an accident. All right, signing out.